In this video, we're going to take a look at the REST command inside of Autodesk Inventor. So here with the REST IPT open, we are going to continue working on this part design where we built the grill on the bottom. And I already have a work plane in here as well as a sketch to get us started. Now the work plane is just offset down and the sketch has got a few pieces of geometry on it. I'm going to activate sketch 17 by double clicking on it. And I'm going to choose F7, which is slice graphics or you can right click and choose Slice Graphics, just to see inside the design. As you can see, I already have a definition of length and width to this rectangle that I've created. I already have it lined up to the center point here. However, I need to somehow attach it to the edge. The way a rest is built, you can have it overhang, you can have it be back from the edge. That's going to change your geometry when you do so. Now, instead of having it overhang or have it being recessed, I'm actually going to use my project cut edges and attach this bottom line of the rectangle to this part edge. So that basically is going to give me the representation of that being cut in half and able to attach it to the exact edge. So I'll choose collinear for my constraint tools and just make this collinear to that line. So now I have a fully constrained sketch. I'll go ahead and choose OK and finish my 2D sketch by right clicking and choosing it from our marking menu. Now ready to begin the rest command. By choosing rest from our plastic part panel, we have to specify a profile from which we would like to generate our rest geometry. I'll go ahead and choose this rectangle on the inside here, and you get a nice preview of what that rest will be. As you can see, this is a way to create geometry that's recessed into your part to create kind of a shelf. Now this can also create geometry that goes out and above. So it can actually generate additional geometry, not just subtract geometry. And it really depends on the curvature of your plastic part, the shape of your sketch, and the location of its plane. Now that this is selected, I can go through here and specify my thickness value. And to match my shell, I'll make it one and a half. And I can also specify which direction that it fills. So you can see that if I do the outside method, it's actually adding a bunch of geometry out this way. I don't want that. I'll have it return to go back into the inside there. Now, if I kind of turn this over upside down and look inside of it, it looks like it's creating a box on top for the rest, obviously, and also supporting geometry on the bottom side. Some of that is going to merge into my existing geometry that we see here. Other geometry is going to hang off in the back side here as a supporting piece of geometry to my plastic part. Now, if you don't want that, you might have to get rid of it afterwards with a reduction of material. For now, I'm pretty satisfied with what I'm seeing, and I'm going to go to the More tab. Here, we can adjust our taper. Now, on this part, I have a three degree taper. So, on my clearance here, for the clearance angle, I'll make that three degrees. And we can see this taper back just a little bit there on that back side. For my landing taper, I'll also make that three degrees. You can see that actually is going to match that geometry there now. So I'm not going to have any issues with overlapping geometry there. However, on the back side, you can see that it is bowing out a little bit. And maybe I need that. You know, if this is going to be pulled off a plastic part design for injection molding, I might need that draft on there. Now I can also adjust my landing distance. Currently, it's based on my work plane that I'm built on. I can also tell it to go to a surface. And anytime you change this offset value, it's going to adjust it based on where your plane is. So there's one millimeter. Let's do three millimeters. You can see it's definitely going up much higher. And it's also throwing off all my other geometries. So I'm going to be very careful with how I use that. Let me have this go back down to zero. I'll choose OK to generate that rest. Here I'll just turn off the visibility of this work plane. And I'm also going to turn off the visibility of this bottom solid so we can see inside there better. And there you can see the rest. Again, if you don't feel you need this supporting geometry, you could remove this, or you could try to build your rest in a way that it doesn't create it. But the software thinks that you might need some supporting geometry, so it helps you build that rest. Now, if you want to get rid of this, you could use commands like delete face. So let's go up to our modify panel. Expand that down and find delete face. I simply select on a few faces here. This might cause damage to your model, so we'll just give this a try to see what we get. And we'll try the heal option. And I don't want to delete that bottom face there, so let me deselect that. And there we go. So I got rid of that bottom geometry for me pretty quickly without having to fight the rest command that much. 
Now I still might need to come in here and do some other cleanup work. I can see that there's actually some extra geometry that was generated here, so I might need to fix that. So I'm going to go back to my rest command by double clicking on it. And on my more tab, let's take a look at the side here. I got some extra geometry that generated on the inside. Perhaps I might take my thickness down just a little bit. Now I don't have that issue on the inside. However, this geometry is a little bit skinnier now, so you might have to play with this a little bit to get it just right, but I'm happy with that rest.